So we're standing in front of this thing. Yes. Uh, how screwed are we, you and I? We're back in the time of the dinosaurs. What's the probability of our survival? There's two big things to weigh up, which are going to be interesting, which is would they even consider us a potential meal? Mm -hmm. Because we know that animals that have never, animals have to learn stuff. And so animals that have never encountered things before are often, that they don't have a response because they don't know what their response should be. We should say during that time, there was not something that looked like primates. No, <laughs> absolutely nothing. So we, we would we, look very weird. We would, right? we would look weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, th there's lots of really cool records of, um, particularly you've got down in um, Indonesia and stuff, where you've got these insane volcanic spires and it leads to these tiny little valleys. And people go in there and they go, yeah, the animals walk up to us. They've never seen a human. They don't know what it is. So it might look at us and animals are fundamentally cautious. It doesn't know if we're a threat. So maybe it might just find us weird or in some way, shape or form off-putting. And so we may not even be considered on the menu. Um, the other thing is we might be too small. Um, my suspicion is we're not. So animals, carnivores typically take stuff that is much, much smaller than them, despite Basically, every dinosaur documentary movie ever shows T-Rex hunting an adult Triceratops, which is like the same size as it. Uh, and every documentary, you've got to have lions taking down a wildebeest or even a buffalo. Like, these are weird and rare outcomes. These don't usually happen. The vast majority of active predation is on stuff much, much, much smaller than you. I totted some of this up for a paper I did on Microraptor, this really small gliding dinosaur from China, where we actually have a bunch of specimens with various stomach contents in them. And we were coming up with numbers of about like five to 20% of the mass being typical. So prey versus predator. And that's actually very similar to what we see with modern carnivores. And it's not far off what we've seen, even with things like tyrannosaurs, where you occasionally find consumed bones from prey. So if we put the lower end of that as 5% of the mass of a T-Rex, we might actually be okay um, if it doesn't consider us worth the hassle. Then, assuming you're encountering a big adult and not a half-sized one that maybe only weighs a ton, then we might be all right. What would be the survival strategy? So the there's a thing that you criticized not being true that I, I guess in Jurassic Park, uh, not moving. Yeah, it's nonsense. They they can see really well. Like I said, like T-Rex has giant eyeballs. People don't realize that because like whales and like elephants, it looks small compared to the size of the animal. But what you're in really important for vision is absolute size, not proportional size. And absolutely, their eyes are gigantic. Probably the biggest on Earth at that time. Yeah, uh, a guy called Kent Stevens did a paper. He's got a really nice graphic of it. If you, if you, if you just put S-T-E-V-E-N-S, T-Rex. There, it's the one with the, here we go. <laughs> That's the one with the, Google, with the googly eyes. That's a baseball or a tennis ball sized eyeball. And when you think about the incredible visual acuity of something like an eagle, which has eyes not much bigger than ours, Think about what that's going to do. And we, we absolutely know there's been loads of studies on this in mammals and birds and other things as well that basically eyeball size correlates with visual acuity, and that can fold in two different ways. It can be like general sharpness, like how well can you see a long way away? So eagles and vultures, it's really important. Or it can be good in low light. And I now discovered that there's a Nature Was Metal subreddit. Oh, yeah. Subreddit, read it. Yeah, yeah. For which is gnarly, at, gnarly paleo things. Yeah. Yeah, I come across it occasionally. For dinosaurs, let's see what's the top post of all time. Oh, that's a glyptodontid. Our Argentinian farmer recently found a 20,000 years old fossilized crypton. So these are, these are giant armadillo-like animals with club tails. Interesting. Wow. Oh, that's Black Beauty. That's at the Royal Tyrrell Museum. So giant eyeballs, they can either see very well, they can see a very long way in daylight, or they can see very well at night. And my suspicion is it's the latter. I think they're probably primarily nocturnal when, when they get that size. Well, not moving might be a good strategy because it's cautious because it doesn't understand what these yeah. primates are. Yeah. Um, but I think if it, if it starts coming towards you, if you're truly in the open, then you're in real trouble. And I'm not sure 
like you do. I mean, the one thing, the one advantage humans have over almost anything else on Earth, there's a handful of exceptions, is we have range. I can pick up a rock and hurl it with reasonable accuracy. Most things can't do that. And animals probably don't like being hit in the face or hit in the eyes with a rock at a range because, again, they're not going to know how it's happened or how to respond to this. All they know is they're taking damage, and yeah. that's bad. <laughs> and that, that might genuinely be enough to do it. I wouldn't want to try, but again, if I was dumped on a plane or a prairie with nothing else but a T-Rex that was interested in me, it's worth a shot. Um, if you're in the forest, I would try and get behind a tree. The they're quite good at turning. There's been a couple of nice papers looking at like the, the mechanics of the foot and the ankle and how quickly they could like pivot. Um, but we're much better because we're just so much smaller. So it, it, it would be very kind of Looney Tunes, but I think you could go round and round a big tree, <laughs> right? Yeah, but much faster than it could. Yeah. And so it's yeah. going to get bored or lack interest sooner or later.